You guys enjoying the service so far? Good, about 12 of you, that's okay. <laughs> Got about 30 more minutes to fix that, okay? So are your feet cold yet? If they are, just wrap them around your neighbor's legs. <laughs> they won't mind, It'll be fine. Well, uh, we do hope you're enjoying the service. We're gonna continue right along, but uh, we did wanna make sure we take this time to welcome all of you that are our guests with us this weekend. If you're a guest, if this is your first time or you're newer to Bay Community Church, we just want to say welcome. Thank you so much for being with us. And we do want to meet you. And uh, we just ask that if you are a guest, just stop by our Welcome Center on your way out today. There we want to shake your hand and uh, just give you a free gift. It's our way of saying thanks for joining us today. And then one quick announcement. I want to let you guys know that starting today, we are beginning our summer fusion group semester. We're going to be going over the next eight weeks. All of our small groups will be going throughout the summer, and we want you to be a part of that. And to find out uh, if there's a group in your area that you can get involved with, you can go to findafusion.com and uh, figure out how you can join in on that. So I encourage you to do so. Well, if you haven't been able to tell yet, this is a very, very special weekend around here. And like I said earlier, it's one of my favorite weekends. I look forward to it all year long. And as we come together for Barefoot Weekend and collect shoes and things that we can get and we can collect and give to other people, we also get to celebrate what God is doing through Servolution, which is our outreach events. And so two years ago, we showed you guys a film. And that film uh, involved a lot of stories that came out of our Servolution event, stories of people that were involved with so many different things, and we thought that that was such a cool video, we wanted to show it to you again. And uh, we know a lot of you guys have been coming to Bay very recently, you just started coming to Bay Community, and uh, some of you have been coming forever, and so for those of you that are new, we want to give you an opportunity to see this, but for those of you that are old, how many old people are here? Not a lot, okay. Uh, none. All right. Anyway, but uh, we wanted to give you guys an opportunity to just kind of celebrate with us what God did, but also just celebrate what God is doing through Bay Community and uh, all that he's getting ready to do through us. And so I hope that you are inspired once again today. For those of you that are seeing it for the first time, I hope it inspires you and encourages you. And we want you to just sit back, get comfortable for the next 30 minutes. We want you to just check out this video and see how God can use someone like you. Watch this. Almighty God, the great arranger, the composer of all things good, writes on our hearts his spirit in each of us who love him, arranging a unique calling, an ongoing melody, perfectly harmonizing with his plan in the symphony of our lives, we faithfully practice the written score while yielding to the baton of the great conductor. 
while his spirit nudges us yet to improvise in the harmonics of his love. A love that must not simply exist in theory. There are those deafened by pain, those who've been distracted by the noise of other rhythms, those so separated by distance that they cannot feel the resonance of his saving grace. And to those we must demonstrate a love that has to be seen, a love that has to be felt, so that love can again be heard. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We know that something is wrong, something is out of control, and it's a feeling that everything around us is crumbling. And it's not just what's in the news cycle, it's in what's going on in our neighborhoods, in our communities, even in our own homes. And if society's way is what's normal, then it's clear that normal just doesn't work. We have got to be different. And it's not that we're asleep at the wheel or anything, we're voicing our complaints and everyone's outraged and somebody should do something. Maybe it's God, the government, some authority figure. The fact of the matter is that God has always used people to do his work. And we are his hands and his feet. And when we change our focus from ourselves and our circumstances onto his purposes and plans, we become the vehicle that he uses to deliver change, the kind of change that only he can author. About a year ago, our church, Bay Community, decided to overthrow the status quo, and we started something called Servolution. By putting an emphasis on serving our fellow man outside of the church walls, we set out to remind our people that the greatest of these isn't filling pews for the sake of filling pews. It isn't about having awesome videos to keep everyone engaged and entertained, though that is kind of awesome. Dude, not now. No, the greatest of everything the church has to give is the saving power of God's love for us when he sent his son Jesus to make up for everything that we've ever screwed up. It's truth and a wrapper of love. All of this sounds great in theory, but to break it down to bare bones, life is hard and people are in pain. And since we live in a highly churched area of the country, sometimes it's hard to hear the gospel as anything other than an old broken record. But if we meet their real and practical needs, even for a moment, we might get their attention long enough to hear the sound of what God is trying to do in their lives. Service is an attitude, a way of life, a state of heart that constantly asks, what can I do to make someone's life better today? Acting and reacting as we touch those around us, not for any other reason than just because. About a year ago, we launched a community-wide outreach that we call Just Because, and the goal was simple change lives by simply loving people until they ask why. Go out, do something random, and then leave a card letting the person know that we love them just because. Maybe it's paying for the person's groceries in the checkout line behind you. Maybe it's watering the plants on the front porch of a neighbor who's been working late. The point is to look for opportunities and to cover our community with the kind of kindness that makes their day. This week, I went to the drugstore to get my prescriptions filled. While I was waiting, I left the counter to get some groceries. When I came back, I found that someone had paid for my pills. On the bottle was this card with a note that said, just because. 
You know, what that person didn't realize was I didn't know how I was going to make it this week. Now I know I'm going to be fine. I'll be taken care of. Yesterday was Valentine's Day. And as a teacher in public high school, <laughs> yeah, we just don't always get a lot of love. That's why it was so nice to get a basket from your church with a Just Because card. It made me feel special and remembered, and it was a very sweet thing to do. But there's no way anyone could have planned what happened last night. I was gonna treat myself to dinner alone when another couple eating out must have noticed. They paid for my dinner, sent over another one of those Just Because cards. Thanks to your church, I felt more loved today than I ever would have otherwise. We've had a ton of stories come in through our website, both from people who received a Just Because card and people who were touched by giving them. One that comes to mind involves someone who noticed that a whole family of five, including small children, were drinking water with their meal at a pizza place. He slipped up to the cashier and took care of their meal along with a Just Because card. The father followed him out the restaurant and thanked him profusely. And it turns out he'd been unemployed and had scraped everything he had together to drive the family to the beach for a vacation. Here's where it gets really interesting. The family ended up praying and meeting Jesus in the parking lot. And it was all just because. Serving doesn't always have to be about what you have to give. Sometimes it's simply paying attention. Everyone can connect the dots. Maybe it's going out of your way to call in a favor for someone who really needs a break. Maybe you know somebody who's out looking for a new job and they also need a new pair of shoes. Take inventory of the areas of influence in your life. Who do you know? What resources do you have access to? Practice paying attention as opportunities to connect cross your path. You just never know what the domino effect will be. At first glance, it's just another empty building, one more casualty of the economy, one more sign of things heading the wrong direction in our community. But looked at a different way, it was an opportunity. Last year, we wanted to do a ministry event to help out single moms. We hosted a car clinic where they could have their car serviced at no charge. The idea was awesome, and we did the best we could, but it was on the grass, it was in the mud, and things just got a little messy. And so one of our members knew of an old car dealership building that was vacant. So he called around to see if he could arrange for us to use it for our annual Christmas bicycle event, Merry Christmas Gulf Coast. He ended up leasing the building, and he donated it again for us to use for this year's car clinic. Yeah, the first year, we started off uh, in, in the grass, and it was um, in March, and we thought it was early enough in the year that it wouldn't be too hot on us. Um, it turned out to be like 120 that day, and we spent about, uh, about nine hours working on, on all the cars to get them done. So we had about 20 guys that knew what it was like to be out in the sun, on the dirt, getting dirty, trying to do oil changes and brake jobs and, and all the other work. And when they came here and saw what we had and what we had available to us this year, they were blown away. I mean, we had car lifts, you have air compressors, you had all the electrical stuff we need. We had fans. We were able to stay cool this year. We were out of the sun. Nobody got their head burnt. For some of us with bald head, that was important. I was married for 28 years. We moved here in August of last year to Spanish Fort and was looking for a church because my husband would never go to church so I after we got divorced decided I wanted to get back into going to church then I found out what they were doing and I was totally thrilled because it's just not something I ever took care of so it's nothing I ever thought about it was never on my plate my ex-husband used to do that so I was thinking this is amazing that you do this for people especially for single moms who you know struggle and have a lot on their plates and you know, have to take care of the kids and the dog and the house and jobs if they have them. It's, it's a huge responsibility to be a single mom. So when I got to the clinic, I had actually spoken to Ben about actually learning how to do these things because after, you know, not really taking care of myself for 28 years, I was ready to start 
moving on and taking care of myself and I wanted to go back and learn how to change oil. And so they actually let me go back, change, you know, showed me, I tried to stay out of the way and they showed me everything, very simple, something I could do. And they were so friendly and so wonderful and they showed me stuff that I wasn't even, you know, make sure you check this and make sure you check that. And then when you do your oil, you need to do this and your fluids and please thank all those men because they gave up their whole Saturday for, for us single moms that it really meant a huge amount to me. So now I can change my own oil and I don't have to depend on anybody. Even a lady in our church connected the dots. She met a woman in Foley a couple of days before our car clinic and she paid attention to her needs. And when that lady showed up to our car clinic, we had guys waiting on her. We knew she was gonna arrive and so we serviced all of the needs on our vehicle and then we took her to Walmart and we bought her four brand new tires. Showing people who God is is a lot more effective than trying to tell people who God is. And if you're willing to show them, then they will see it and they will be changed. Skills are one of the few assets we have that cannot easily be taken away. What do you have that costs you nothing but time that could literally transform someone's everyday life? And I can hear you all now. Ben, I'm an accountant. I can't do Saturday morning accounting clinics. Well, sure you can. Maybe you can volunteer to do taxes for single moms, or maybe help hold the hand of a shell-shocked widow through the messy details of settling an estate. Or what if you've got a desk job and just don't see how you can type and file your way into service? Volunteer to format, type out a resume for someone looking for a job. Just be creative. Okay, but that person can't be me. I'm not perfect. I'm in the middle of a life crisis. I'm nobody's role model. I'm still in the middle of making mistakes. Who on earth is gonna look at me and see heaven? I was 28 years old and uh, had a house built in Lake Forest before Daphne High School was ever even thought of. And I um, was one of those homeowners that I was there every day. After work, I went and toured the house and I just fell in love with the process. For 12 years, I owned my own building company. As the, the building boom happened, we were right in the right spot at the right time. So we were, I was doing as much as I wanted to. I actually made the statement that no matter what happens in the rest of the United States, Daphne, Alabama, or the Eastern Shore will not slow down. I was wrong, <laughs> because it, it not only slowed down, it just stopped one day. It absolutely came to a screeching halt. So I spent one night just absolutely, totally distraught. I was so upset and so distraught that my wife started to call the police because she thought I was gonna do something stupid. But, you know, my faith in God is much stronger than that. I just didn't have any answers. And I was trying to find those answers on my own. And then when the Servolution thing kicked off, I thought that's a perfect way to serve the community. And that was one of the things I was looking for in a church is how to give back. I think I built a wheelchair ramp the first time. There's, there's been two or three occasions that we've gone into houses and it's, they've just been in such ill repair. I mean, the, basically it needed to be rebuilt. And they're asking for just fix my drain or my water heater's not working, or something like that. And, and you walk in and just the, the humble surroundings that they live in is, is very awakening, eye-opening, to, to see how some people are forced to live. And, um, but you, you know what, they're, they're usually happy. You know, I got caught up in the stuff market. And what happens when you get all the stuff is you have to work harder to keep the stuff. And, um, when I lost the stuff, I found out, you know, it really, it really wasn't that big of a deal. It really wasn't. Uh, it's, it's the people that, uh, the people that matter. It's 
Lisa and I didn't really know what the benevolence program was. Basically, we get calls that come into the church on a regular basis every week. We try to find out what those needs are and then try to figure out how best to help with the needs if we can or find the person that can help with the needs. Before I started working with benevolence, I had no idea. And as you get involved with it, you just see that there's so many ways that you can get involved out there. Sometimes you get a little deeper in someone's story. And it may be something as simple as giving somebody a ride to church that maybe is homebound or they don't have a vehicle and a way to get back and forth. And just a simple ride to church makes all the difference to somebody that's kind of secluded. The initial request came through uh, Brent, Kate, and Dan Mooney with the construction project. They had a um, request to build some park benches and some uh, a wheelchair ramp, wheelchair access ramp. And the wheelchair access ramp was for uh, Sheila and Paul. Because at the time, they just had a board that was out in front of the door, and it was very It was, was actually hard. a door. A door that was <laughs> yeah. out for her to go down to use as a ramp. And it was very hard because the wheels would get caught in the grooves, and she couldn't get smoothly down the, to right. the door, so they built a ramp. Uh, on the way to uh, church one Sunday, uh, Sheila was telling me about uh, the difficulty she was having getting an electric wheelchair. She really needed it because if she has an electric wheelchair, she can get herself to the convenience stores. But she said, you know, Mr. Art, I'm not worried about it, though. She said, uh, God meets my needs without me even asking. And uh, this is where it really gets interesting because a couple days later, it might have been Monday or Tuesday, Ben sends out an email and says that someone has donated uh, an electric wheelchair to the church. Did I know of anyone who might need it? So, of course, I called him up and said, I think I know who that's meant for. So, whoever donated that wheelchair, thank you. Um, it, it got to where it needed to be. When I look back at the trail of this story, how an esteemed builder in our community who in the midst of losing his own business, still made a decision to serve. He built a ramp for Sheila, who in turn got to know Art and Lisa, and now they drive from Spanish Fort to Mobile every single Sunday to bring her to church. I mean, come on, sign us up, right? It's, it's like a modern day version of the loaves and the fishes story. How God can take exactly what we have wherever we are and multiply it into something life-changing. But he can only do that if we offer our loaves and our fishes to him. God's like a GPS. All you gotta do is punch home and he'll take you there. And you don't know where you're going or why you're turning here or why you're turning there. But if you'll just listen to his voice and follow his lead, he'll take you where you need to go. And you know what, even if you get off on the wrong path, he'll recalculate for you and put you on that parallel path right back to where you're supposed to be. We're not all called to quit our jobs or shelve our families and take to the streets, but we are called to back up those that are. That's why we partner with other ministries who are making frontline impacts in the areas of deepest need. Beyond our Servolution events, Bay Community works hand in hand with 29 full-time nonprofit ministries. We come alongside people who have completely given their lives over in service to the poor, the hungry, the addicted, the incarcerated, the very people that we may not run into every day in our neighborhoods, but the very people Jesus made a point to touch with his own hands. Would it move you if I told you that there are children in our area that have no real families? Children as young as 10 years old who are more or less responsible for themselves? Now, what if I told you that most of the homes in these neighborhoods could be considered third world, having no running water or electricity, some even without doors? Now, what if I told you that was only 17 miles from the 18th hole of the Timber Creek Golf Course? What if I told you they were only five and a half miles from Spring Hill College? And we're not trying to start Occupy Point Clear, but the truth is, there is no biblical excuse for us if we know about this 
and do nothing. John Eads took us through Alabama Village, where he and his wife Dolores have spent six days a week for the last 10 years being a constant in a neighborhood where one of the only constants is despair. If, if I gave you a list of things, if I gave myself a list of things that go on here 10 years ago, I wouldn't believe it. I would think I was making it up, but unfortunately I'm not. Statistically, like I say, it is a violent place. We've had 63 people shot within 200 yards of our building mm -hmm. that we know of. And so it's probably more that since August with, in other words, in the last nine months, five of our students have been killed. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it is what it is. When somebody moves out of a house, they usually burn it down. Or if they're mad at the person, they'll burn it down. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think the violence just happens at night, but no, it happens during the day at night. Like just earlier, you heard there's a gunshot. I mean, you hear gunshots all the time. Um, and these kids have grown up with that. That's, that. that's their world. My wife and I started the ministry about 2001. And so we've just, just celebrated our 10 year anniversary. Prior to that, we did a lot of work in prisons, both in Texas and out here in Alabama. And basically our mission has always been to share the message of faith, love, and hope of Christ both in word and deed, and in truth and in love. And it's not just an evangelical thing, which is obviously very important, but it's, it's experience and it's walking with them. It's becoming part of their family. Like I said, one of the things we ask them, why do you guys keep coming? And they say, well, this is where our family is. This is, this is our home and this is, and that's, that's a huge compliment, right? Mm -hmm. But that requires a lot. You yeah. have to, again, walk, you know, with, in, with them and, uh, you know, rejoice when they rejoice and weep when they weep. Basically, we have about 450 kids on our rolls that have signed liability forms since we've been here. And, um, you know, of all of them, only seven of them have what we would call a traditional family, mother, father, married, and all that. The rest of them don't. And they live a very nomadic life. They move a lot. And, and, and they, they live through a lot of struggles. Our consequences are far more drastic. And if they're not getting killed, they get locked up. Um, we've got several of them fighting murder charges right now. To be in, immersed in the community and to, again, walk with them every day, be part of that family, requires all of that. And uh, it's, that's, that's where it's hard. Prison yeah. ministry was easy, dude, yeah. compared to this. <laughs> I mean, this is a lot harder. It's a lot more rewarding, too. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it's funny, the ministry just becomes that place. You know, it goes from these little kids programs, then we do a gang intervention program. I went out to Los Angeles, learned about that. Got to more involved with the, with the older guys that were living really at risk lifestyles and so forth to bring them in, make them feel welcome to come. Um, now we have apartments on the Eastern Shore for the kids that have really evolved and want to change and want to become independent. They get jobs, they pass drug tests, and, and now, now they're living independently, wow. going to college. You know, we've got four going to college next year. Um, amazing. And the whole yard dog thing has evolved now where last year, just voluntarily, we were cut, cutting lots around the neighborhood. And we'd pay them a little 20 bucks a month, a week or whatever, for the, those eight weeks of summer Bible camp. Well, now God has allowed us to actually have a small business yeah. through the Volunteers of America, which is where I work. That's where my paycheck comes from. Um, we've been able to form a small business called the Yard Dogs where they go and they cut, they, they do lawn care. Yeah. And so we had a contract to the city of Pritchard, the housing board, that allows us to clear lots. And it just so happened that most of the lots are here in Alabama Village. Wow. So the kids from the village are being paid as employees. Oh, Again, awesome. pass the drug test, do all the orientation they have to do to become an employee. And now they're cleaning their own community up and get paid for it. How can you tell a kid God's a loving father? Well, they don't even know what that is. Yeah. Not only that, they're mad about it. Yeah. So we can't use that, that, that illustration. Yeah. We have to prove it. And we, we have to show them what consistent love is. And because they're all looking for it. Yeah. And that breaks down every barrier that's out there. A lot of people say, oh, you're white. How can you? They don't care about that. Ask them. And they'll tell you. It's all about how genuine are you. In all our years here, we've never had a volunteer get injured. We've never, I mean, we've had incidents very close. But no one's ever been hurt. I mean, and you can only credit that to God yeah. and His, I mean, His anointing over the place is amazing. Um, and just to see the beauty, you, you can't come here and not see that God's doing something right. amazing. You have to first be called to do it, 
And then you just have to be yourself, man. You don't have to put on this big act or, or act like somebody you're not. You, you're there just to show Christ's love. Reflect it. Boom, it works every time. And that doesn't mean all our results are great. Like I said, we've had we buried five kids this year. I mean, wow. I mean, who, who does that? I mean, it's 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 very, very real. Yeah. Um, it's, it's like in, the Bible says, you know, we, we're in the shadow of death. We really are. And uh, that's just, we accept that. Mm -hmm. But we don't accept it to a point where there is light. There is a solution. It's not, we're not defeated here. There is a victory. We just have to claim it. And we have to present that. And... That's, that's, that's the fun part of it. As the distance between heaven and earth seems greater by the minute, how do we make even a ripple in the sea of hard reality? How can we talk about family values when we don't know the family next door? How much more will God provide when we make use of his provisions? What would our community look like one year from now if we resolve to pay attention, if we all committed to do one thing a month or one thing a week, if we just paid attention to everyday opportunities that are already there waiting for us to notice? What if every day we woke up and asked ourselves, what can I do today to make someone's life better? As we reignite our Servolution this year, let's engage our community. We invite you to check out our website at baycommunity.com slash Servolution and find out about upcoming opportunities to serve. Grab a stack of Just Because cards in the Commons. Listen out for our upcoming foster and adoption support campaign. Whether it's a just because, taking that extra step to make your resources available, your skills, your time, or even your money, let's do His work here on earth as it is in heaven. You know that I can use somebody. You guys enjoy that? Yeah? <clears throat> Just as uh, impactful today as it was then. And you know, I'm going to sound like I'm bragging, but man, I love my church. I don't know about you, but I love my church. And what I love most about our church is that when we see something like this, it doesn't just stir us emotionally it doesn't just move us internally but it moves us into action it causes us to want to do something 
Even to the point of if you mark this day two years ago on your calendars and you look at all that's taken place, it's so cool to say we've seen 407 individual people make Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior outside of the walls of this church. That's pretty cool. Four hundred and seven people, people on the streets, food pantries, prisons, all over. A hundred and fourteen thousand people, six hundred and twenty-six people, have had individual, face-to-face -face interaction with someone from our church since we showed this film two years ago, and it's because of you. It's because we believe our church believes we are the expression of God's love when we serve other people. When we get out of these walls and we serve people like the single mom who doesn't know how they can afford something as simple as an oil change or the elderly woman that's in a nursing home that feels forgotten by her family or a, a kid who doesn't know who their parents are or a kid who may know who their parents are but they're in prison so they have nobody. We're able to express God's love to those people, to the poor, the orphan, the widow, the prisoner the addicted, the lonely, the hurting. We're able to express God's love when we serve them. And you know what's cool is that there's still so much work to do. We've done a lot in the last two years. We've seen incredible things. People saved, healed, all outside of the church walls, but there's still so much to do, and that's where we need you guys. <laughs> And, you know, we're always trying to make it easier for you to get involved. And so you can sign up starting today for things going on right here in our community. Wherever you're at, there's things that you can do to get involved. And so I want to pray for you. If you just bow your heads, I want to pray for you before we leave today. And just a simple prayer, you know, because we can watch things like we've just watched today and a lot of you may have seen this before, but what I always like to pray in moments like these is that, you know, I want to pray against the spirit of fear. Because a lot of times we th see things like this and we say, well, I can never do that. That's not me. It's out of my comfort zone. I want to pray against that. And then, of course, I want to pray against pride of just, you know, I, that's too, I'm too good for that. Somebody else will handle it. Whatever needs to happen, someone else will take care of it. No, I want, I want to pray against those things and Again, like I said, that we're not just moved emotionally, but that we would move into action from this day forward. That we would never see another individual outside of this church the same way. That we would always be looking for opportunities to serve. So let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this day. And we thank you for what you're doing in our hearts. God, that you've shown us this thing again to just challenge us and encourage us to do something. To be your church, Lord. Father, may we not just hear the words that came from today, but Lord, may we do what your word says and may we get out of these walls and love people as you have loved us. Father, I, I bind away fear. Lord, if there be anybody in here today that says, I can't do that, that's out of my comfort zone. Lord, I'm thankful your word says you've not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Lord, let us love your people. Let us love them unconditionally. No strings attached. I pray for creativity to rise from today, Lord, to where we're looking for opportunities to love your people. And I pray that pride doesn't get in the way, Lord. I pray you would open our eyes to where we could see past ourselves and let us see people that need a touch from you every day. Lord, move us into action. Thank you, Lord, that you would use someone like us to make such a big difference. Even though it seems small sometimes, Lord, we're thankful there's always more, always more than what we can see immediately. Thank you for using us. Thank you for our church, the vision of our church to help people. Lord, the vision of our pastor, Lord, the vision of our staff, the vision of, of, of our entire church body, Lord, to get out and do something. We're thankful for that today. And I pray you bless these people in Jesus' name. Amen.